A school district in North Carolina has become the front line in the fight to keep and grow diversity in our nation's public school system. At issue, a now repealed policy in the Wake County public school system that achieved economic and racial diversity by ensuring that no more than 40% of students in any of the district's schools were on a reduced lunch program. That, that's a marker of poverty. That policy, which was adopted 11 years ago, was one of the first of its kind to integrate schools on an economic basis after courts ruled against using race-based criteria. Now, students were sent to schools throughout the system to ensure a healthy mix. And the result, as reported by the Washington Post earlier this year, is that over the years, both Republican and Democratic school boards supported the system. A study of 2007 graduation rates by Ed Week magazine ranked Wake County 17th among the nation's 50 largest districts, with a rate of 64 percent. The Post also cited benefits beyond academic achievement. Quote, I want these kids to be culturally diverse, said Clarence McLean, who is African-American and the guardian of a, of a niece and nephew who are doing well in the county schools. If they're with kids who are all the same, you've got to be able to break out of that mold and it's impossible. You've got to be able to step outside of your little world. Then came the school board election of 2009. A group of conservative candidates campaigning on a platform of so-called neighborhood schools won a 5-4 majority on the Wake County School Board and swiftly began dismantling the integration policy using coded language from the civil rights era, quote, forced busing. First, a little background about Wake County. It's home to one of the largest districts in the country, with more than 143,000 students. Just under half are white, nearly a quarter are African American, almost 15% are Hispanic, and 6% are Asian. The county itself includes the city of Raleigh, its poor urban areas, along with affluent suburbs and rural areas outside the city. About 10% of Wake County lives in poverty. The area is home to both the legendary Wolfpack of North Carolina State University and the historic Shaw University, where the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee was founded. The community did not take the attack on their schools lying down. Wake County teachers, students, parents, community leaders, and clergy are outraged and have protested the Republican-led school board's effort to dismantle the district's integration policy. More than two dozen people were arrested at school board meetings in the past. And now, there are multiple reports, directly or indirectly, linking the Koch brothers, those mysterious right-wing billionaires behind the AstroTurf group Americans for Prosperity, to the Republican school board members who are actively pushing to resegregate the Wake County schools. To be fair, it's not entirely clear just how much money the Koch-backed Americans for Prosperity put behind the candidates in 2009. Speaking out of both sides of its mouth in a statement just released, the AFP says, on the one hand, Americans for Prosperity did not spend one single dime on those elections. But every Republican who helped repeal the Wake County integration policy was endorsed by a lo local group, Wake Cares, a group that, according to its own website, is working to provide equal educational opportunities to make Wake, to all Wake County children. And according to the North Carolina chapter of Americans for Prosperity, Americans for Prosperity is on record as supporting the parents of Wake Cares through significant financial contributions as well as other support. The North Carolina coordinator for Americans for Prosperity also admitted to Newsweek his group did perform, quote, voter education and volunteer work on the school board campaign. Suffice it to say, the waters are murky, but a national group that supposedly has states' rights libertarian ideals is meddling in a local school board. And that school board's district, that was once a national example of how diversity and integration made every student better. And it's now being hauled back to a pre-civil rights era status. On a personal level, I spent nearly a decade living in North Carolina. I still have friends and family living and working in Wake County. In 2008, I was proud to see the state that had seen sit-ins over lunch counter segregation go blue in support of the first African-American president. But in the past few years, many Tea Party-backed North Carolina Republicans who came to office in 2009 have swiftly and viciously fought against the state's hard-won successes. These are moments in American politics when I have feelings of shock and wonder. Now, I know that historically, 
towns, states, businesses, and individuals have chosen to preserve racial segregation rather than reap the economic and social benefits of fairness and equality. But even knowing that history, I am dumbfounded that in the 21st century, we have any state, particularly one as diverse as North Carolina, that's willing to turn back the clock. Now, as for the end game in Wake County, that is yet to be decided. There's another Wake County school board election on October 11th. Five seats are up for grabs. Four of them are held now by Democrats. That is every Democratic seat on the school board. So in order to take back the majority, Democrats are going to have to win all five of those seats in the next election. That's a hell of an uphill battle. And it's still unclear exactly who, and more to the point, whose money will be trying to tilt the vote in one way or another in an attempt to repeal the 20th century.